Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video I'm going to show you how I installed a keyboard tray where I edit a lot of these videos and other plans. Now, some of my techniques may not be approved by some of the suppliers or manufacturers of the products, so follow my techniques at your own risk. Now stick around to the end for some extras and some information that you'll want to see. Now please subscribe by checking on that little red icon down in the lower right corner and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything. And please hit that thumbs up icon to give me a like and share this with your family, friends, and fellow woodworking enthusiasts. And be sure to read the descriptions below as it contains a lot of additional information, links, updates, and corrections, and check back often. In these videos, you can speed up the play, slow it down, pause, rewind, and fast forward. See the gear icon down in the lower right corner of the screen. So let's get to this now. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my keyboard so that it comes off this countertop or desktop here. I'm going to put it so it slides underneath here. Gets it out of the way and also at a better level for me to work at than up here like that. And I bought this kit from Amazon online. And I'll put up uh, an image of this, PDF of this. Uh, perhaps an image on the screen here too of this. And on the back side also I laid out what I'm going to redesign here and attach in here. Because uh, the, the keyboard it comes with is this big thing. And while it's got this pull out tray for a mouse and stuff, I don't really need that. And But when I've got it mounted in here, and this was a really, really tight fit. Got the rails in, but I'll show you some of that. Uh, it's coming out straight like this and comes out to a max about there. And my keyboard barely fitting in there. I got a lot of space over here, but not here because I got this angle to my desk here. So, what I want to do is build a table or a tray that comes out that goes at an angle and gives me more space on this one end here so I can get better use of that. And I don't know what I'll do with this old tray. What I like about this particular tray off of Amazon that I couldn't find from like the woodworking stores or anything was some drawer slides that would hold it in in kind of a tight lock position and pull it out and then it would set in an open position so it wouldn't bump easily or drift off on you. And that's what I was looking for. So what I'm going to do is uh, get this changed out and uh, I'll show you what how it comes out. Alright, so I'm going to cut out the piece here according to the plans for making up this drawer that I'm going to replace or the tray for the keyboard tray. Got my blade raised up to make the correct depth of cut on this three quarter piece of uh, plywood I've got here. I selected this. Uh, I can't remember what type of wood this is. Uh, it came out of my pile. Looks like a cabinet grade. It's really straight, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to cut originally here to start. I'm going to cut a width of 20 and 3 8 inches, which is going to be re really the um, well, the width of the keyboard. And then I'm going to make some more cuts um, as per the plans to. Uh, get the angles and the other cuts that I need to get. So right now I'm just going to make this one cut. So get my safety gear on. All right, I'll go on to make some more of the cuts and that angle that I need as per the plan. So I forgot to record this cut that I made and what I did is cut the angle here that I needed for how my uh, tray is going to fit in over my desk since the top is at an angle and got all that measured out. Measured uh, you know, 15 inches on one end, uh, 10 something on the other end 
and then just drew a line between them that gave me my perfect angle. It turns out that uh, the angle is about 14 degrees so and I didn't have a tapered jig to be able to cut this angle with on the table saw here uh, so rather than waiting a few days to get it I decided to use one of my blade guides or saw guides here on one of these uh, tracks that we use for cutting sheet goods up and so forth get two of these together and you got a little over eight feet so I lined this up uh, measured in the distance for the shoe basically in the bottom of my saw and which is five inches so I measured in five inches from the edge that I wanted to cut and that's where I placed this edge of this straight guide here to uh, the straight edge so my saw can follow along like that and what I did was get this out a little bit here since I've already cut it put it along on there just a little long completed my cut and my off cut is this piece and that leaves me with this piece which is what will become my um, keyboard tray on my desk so uh, pretty much it for that uh, as for cutting this up next what I'm going to be doing is sizing this up this is the dimensions I want basically and I'm going to size this up for the width so that it fits on to those uh, drawer glides perfectly on that. And what I want to do is I'm going to put some hardwood edges on these ends where it screws in to the drawer glides because I want a hardwood on there instead of some soft plywood. It'll give me a better bite in there with the screws so it'll be a lot more stable and sturdy that way. So my next step is going to be getting this sized up to fit on the drawer glides. So I've got this um, keyboard tray cut out to the dimensions that I need and the shape that I wanted uh, to give me a better exposure for my keyboard on that tray as a sitting on that angled part of my desk. And I put some hardwood edges on this around the outside edges here so that the uh, screw would have something more solid to go into for attaching this to the drawer slides. So. That'll help hold that in pretty good. Right now I'm going to do is I've tweaked this and everything else given the measurements of the um, edges that I put on here which I cut at a quarter inch thickness and then took all that into account in all my measurements to make this fit right. That's fitting pretty good so far. My next step is kind of what we call the acid test. I'm going to install this and see how it works. Then I may pull it back out again and I'll add some edges to it here to make sure things don't slide off the tray on me and so forth. I may even do some uh, recesses in here with the router like you would with the bowl gouge or something. Um, just to give it some inset to that for setting the keyboard in and so forth. I'll see how it goes and what I need. So, Well, I've got uh, my keyboard installed here. And it works good. It gives me good clearance so I can slide underneath my tabletop here and the angle is good so I can get my keyboard fully exposed not crammed into some corner like that but all the way out here I might put an edge along here to keep it from sliding off but just an ever so slight edge and obviously I don't need to recess this out here any uh, in order to make the keyboard fit it fits just fine and of course I don't use a mouse here at all, I use my trackball over here which I like trackballs better than I do mice because they give me better control for certain things but then again there are times when a mouse works better for certain jobs that you want to do. So this works great and everything fits together well and that's uh, all there is to it. I may finish this board off a little bit and give it some protective coating with like a varnish or something that's it here are a few shots to show how this looks after installation with the keyboard tray open and closed
And here is an image of how the keyboard tray fits underneath the desktop. Now these drawer slides are unique in that they are also height adjustable. They can be mounted lower to give more clearance for a higher profile or a thicker keyboard. As you can see, mine is mounted to give minimal clearance because I have a low profile keyboard. Okay, so you've stuck around with me to the end here, so time for a tip. What I like to do is to keep my table saw clean and waxed so it's good and slick and the wood slides really easy on it. I don't have to struggle pushing it. Now what I do is I clean it with this sand flex and it's very good uh, block for cleaning off your stain or your cast iron tops and all your tools and I just rub it on and rub out all the rust spots depending on the degree and how far your tabletop is gone uh, you may have to do some more extensive cleaning on it then once I've got it clean I spray it with this glide coat sealant that gives it a good coating on there and then let it dry for a while wipe it off and it's just as slick as the wax job on your car so that gives you some pretty good slick surface and okay yeah that works pretty good and it's slide pretty long pretty good so keep your tabletops clean well thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed this and you got some inspiration please give me a like and hit that thumbs up icon also please share it with your family friends and fellow woodworking enthusiasts now please subscribe by clicking on that little red icon down in the lower right corner and be sure to hit that bell so you won't miss anything please leave your comments i like to hear what you think what your suggestions are your questions and what you like to see in the future other viewers will often leave some great tips and ideas that may answer some of your questions now be sure to read the description below as it contains a lot of additional information updates links and corrections so check back often so as i say on the red green show the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.